Praise be to Jesus. How are you, my dear children? Hope you had a good week last week. So last week, do you remember I gave you some assignments and some tasks? I hope all of you have done that. I'm sure all of you have completed those tasks because you are the chosen children of God. Isn't that what we studied in lesson one? Church, the people chosen by God. And may God bless you for what task you have done last week. Today, let's start with Lesson 2, Church, the Community of the Redeemed. Before we start the lesson, let's rise, join our hands, close our eyes, let's pray. Almighty Father, we praise you, we worship you, we give you thanks. Lord Jesus, we thank you for giving us this opportunity to learn about your church. Lord Jesus, we seek your guidance. Holy Spirit, bless us with your gifts of wisdom and knowledge. Mother Mary, intercede for us to your Son Jesus Christ. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. So, the title of Lesson 2 is Church, the Community of Redeemed. What do you mean by the word redeemed? It means to save or saved. So church, the community of redeemed means the people who are the members of the church are saved. Saved from what? Saved from the slavery of sin. Is it not? So last lesson we studied how Israelites were treated as slaves in Egypt and they had to undergo a lot of persecution, struggles, sufferings. And a loving God could not bear this. So he had a redemptive plan. We remember God called Abraham and that was the beginning of his redemptive action to bring all the nations on the earth into a one single family. Now, to save the people of Israel from the slavery of Egypt, God chose two people. Who are they? Moses and Aaron. So God sent them to Egypt to the Pharaoh and asked, they asked Pharaoh to liberate their people. But Pharaoh denied. He didn't want the Israelites to leave Egypt. They were there under slavery for 400 years. Can you imagine being slaves for 400 years? Now God has to take some action. So what God did, He sent calamities on the people of Egypt. He sent nine calamities. Now each time a calamity hit Egypt, the Pharaoh would call Moses and tell him, please take your people and leave this country. Don't stay here and please save us from the calamity. But Every time when the calamity was revoked by God, the Pharaoh would change his mind. He was very clever and cunning. He would just not let Israel people to go from Egypt. And even he would again bind them up. So this was happening for nine calamities. And God this time was very angry. So this time he thought of doing something very serious. So what he did, he planned to slay all the firstborn in Egypt, both man and animals. So the Lord instructed his people, that is Israelites, staying in Egypt. The, he asked them to kill the Passover lamb and take the blood of this Passover lamp and put it on their door ports and lintels so that when the destroyer who comes in the night to kill the firstborn in Egypt will know that this house belongs to God's people. There are God's chosen people inside this house 
so I should not enter this and I should not slay the firstborn. So the Israelites obeyed what the Lord had instructed them. They killed the Passover lamp, took its blood, put it on their door porch and lintel. And the same night, the destroyer came through the streets of the Egypt. And he started slaying all the firstborn man and animal wherever they are in Egypt. There was not one house where a child was not killed. And this time the Pharaoh had no other choice, but he had to surrender before the Almighty. And he called Moses and Aaron and told them to take your people and leave our land and go and serve your Lord. This is how God liberated Israel from the slavery of Egypt. For the Israel people, this liberation was freedom from the slavery of slavery under the Egyptian people. Now, when we come to the New Testament, we see that the people are slaves of sin and they are very far away from God. For Israelites, liberation means redemption from the slavery of Egypt. But redemption in its full essence, it means salvation. Salvation is living in freedom and love with God. And this is what God's chosen people wanted, to live in freedom and love with the Almighty forever and ever. Now, coming to the New Testament, what we see is Lord Jesus as the Passover lamp. In the Old Testament, if Israel was saved from slavery under the Egyptians, using the blood of the Passover lamp, in the New Testament, the whole mankind was saved from sin and from slavery of sin, the bondage of sin by the blood of Lord Jesus who became the Passover lamp in the New Testament. He shed the blood for us on the cross. He paid the ransom for our sins. And that's how God liberated the whole of humanity from sin and they were all called to salvation. Now, in this chapter, we need to see six topics. They are, all are called to salvation, obedience to the commandment, the basic condition for salvation, Jesus, the savior of the world, Jesus, the only savior, in order to be saved, accept the word of God and leave it and the last one, the sacraments, means of salvation. Let's see the first topic. It says, all are called to salvation. Now, in Old Testament, we see that people of Israel are the ones who are saved. And we may think that only Israel is called for salvation. But then, it isn't that way. Every single human being is called for salvation. And what is the reason for that? We read in the book of Genesis how our first parents sinned against God. We know that they were sent out of the Garden of Eden because they sinned against God. And what was their sin? It was disobedience. Now, if you remember, what was the quality that God loved in Abraham? It was obedience. And the first parents just did the opposite. They were disobedient to God's commands. And through them, sin came to all humanity. St. Paul says in the letter to Romans, chapter 3, verses 10, None is righteous, no, not one. 
It means not a single human being on this earth is righteous. Everyone has sinned. This passage highlights the universality of sin. It is something common to all. It's not unique to some kind, separate sects of people. It's common to all. It's universal. And if sin is universal, then obviously salvation should be for all. Because God doesn't save just few. He wants the whole humanity to be saved. So that's how we can say that all are called to salvation. And how this salvation was achieved? God sent His only begotten Son so that we all can be saved and we all get salvation. Again, remember, what is salvation? It is the experience of living in freedom and love with God. Right? Living in freedom. What is freedom? How can we define freedom? So we have studied in our history classes. So India got freedom on August 15, 1947. What does it mean? It means that we are free to do anything. We can think what we want, we can do what we want. And it's all out of love, right? And freedom with love is something God promises us. Coming to the second topic, that is obedience to the commandments, the basic condition for salvation. Now, we see in the Old Testament, God gave ten commandments to Moses and he made a covenant with the people of Israel. The one who obeys my voice and keeps my commandment will be my own possession among all the people and to the ends of the earth. But the Jews consider these commandments as laws. And in fact, they had made hundreds of laws from those Ten Commandments. And for them, salvation was living literally according to the laws. For example, we see in the Bible, the Jews criticizing Jesus when he performs miracles on the day of Sabbath. So for them, salvation means just following blindly, literally the laws. And they didn't live the commandments. So that was not acceptable to God. So God had to establish a new covenant. And the new covenant was established by Jesus. We saw in the first lesson, Jesus established a new covenant by transforming the bread and wine into his body and blood. And he sealed the covenant by his own blood on the cross. And by doing so, God made sure that this time the new covenant is inviolable. That means it cannot be broken. The old covenant was written on stone tablets which were broken by the Jews. But the new covenant was written into the hearts of the people and it could not be broken. People had to keep that covenant. So let's stop first part of the lesson here. And what are the takeaways you have from this? First, we are the people who are saved and we are all called to salvation and we are saved by the blood of Christ on the cross. Let's close this class with a small prayer. Join your hands, close your eyes. Lord Almighty, we thank you for being with us in this class today. We thank you for teaching us that we are redeemed and we are all called to salvation. Lord Jesus, help us to obey the commandments that you have given. Mother Mary, intercede for us to your son Jesus. We make this prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen.
praise be to jesus